ಓಂ ಜ್ಞಾನಧಿಮದನ್ನಸಾಜ್ಞಾನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಾಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮುದಿಥೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ So we are coming in a line from the mercy of Lord Krishna himself. It's his glance that starts this world in motion and it's his glance that sustains it. Maya dakshina prakriti sutesa characharam. the eyes of the lord when they glance upon us give us all sustenance and we're enlivened by him prachodayat every living entity is eternally searching after happiness but bewildered by the myriad lights and which are all reflections in this world of the original spiritual light the various objects of desire in this world it's bewildering array even driving here this morning i saw everyone has a different conveyance see there's different kinds of music <laughs> really have a connection with this world a sango khaya purusha the way to say we have no real connection to the world at all and therefore there's a sense of frustration moving about trying to consume with our eyes with our tongues with our ears the sounds the visions of this world the only thing that will actually satisfy us is the touch of the internal energy and that touch of the internal energy comes from krishna and as we know in the science of krishna consciousness krishna manifests himself in various ways is everyone okay okay to concentrate really pay attention even though there's going to be distractions because technology is involved in it it's please don't pay any attention the only thing that satisfies us is is connection with the internal energy and that internal energy manifests in various ways and my observation over the years that i've been connected with the christian conscious movement in my personal experience the most effective and wonderful way in which krishna manifests in this world is through the shastras i first got a book sitting in my own home not having met devotees and i felt the spiritual world open to me i felt krishna speaking to me directly through the bhagavad gita through the shri shapanishad i could see that i lived in a universe a universe i always wondered about i wondered how far it went if there was a door on the other side and if so where did it lead to and all that was answered in the shri shapanishad i felt the presence in my life as I received the transcendental books that propagated purposely wrote published and then arranged to be distributed so our krishna consciousness movement prophet said is really about helping people to become happy and reconnect with the real source of happiness which is krishna people don't know. and therefore it's a service that's extremely dear to krishna the prayers of sant vaidya say that the lord's most magnificent pastime is saving the conditioned souls from this world and those who distribute the transcendental literatures these shastra deities are directly involved in that that's why when you go on book distribution you'll feel connected to krishna in a way that you may never have felt it before it becomes a sustaining feature of one's life going from book distribution and it doesn't mean you have to go every day it doesn't mean that you have to drop everything else but at least keep in contact once a month 
take time to go out. When you go out for book distribution, there's a kind of exhilaration that takes place because it's a little bit scary, isn't it? When you drop what you're doing, first of all, I'm attached to what I'm doing, and now I'm going out and doing something else, and then I don't know what's going to happen. I like to control my environment as much as possible. Anyone else like that? I like to stay in a controlled environment. One of the reasons that there's so much spiritual oxygen in book distribution. So I, I call book distribution high sadhana. It's a kind of practice that is meant to who teaches this to the devotees is the most dear to me. And I guarantee that that person will go back to God. And I think that's a powerful declaration of Krishna. And those who are wise, they look for these kinds of deals. It's like sometimes people clip coupons because they want to find the best deal at the store. And those who are smart, they look through the Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam and they say, where can I actually get the bargain here? <laughs> Everyone knows his name. He has the metal star. Star from the, the President Gibson personally, Purple Heart Award. And Prabhupada said in the same way, those who dedicate their life to book distribution, they're going out in harm's way, apparently. We're already in harm's way being in the material world. But apparently we're putting ourselves on the line when we go out. Especially we're putting our, our sense of control on the line. So I like to say, that I, I believe it's true, that the hardest part of book distribution is just walking out the door. Because it's, a, it's easy enough to talk about it and philosophize about what book distribution is and so forth. But to actually go out and try it, that's exhilarating. And unless you're gambling, and you won't get that a sense of exhilaration and dull. The prophet said, it's a replacement for each one of the four regulative principles. Because we can't just give things up. We're living entities. We're attached. But you can reattach yourself to something else. And in the case of gambling, he said, if you want to reproduce the same feeling, then surrender to Krishna. He started the Krishna conscious movement in a simple way. What did he do? What was his daily activity? That came later, worshiping Shalagrama. What was his regular daily program like at his house? <laughs> he, did, he did a Bhagavad Gita class. At his house, every day, he had a, a Bhagavad Gita class. And he just invited anybody from the neighborhood to come there and participate and listen. And then, of course, they'd chant and they'd have a Bhagavad Gita class. And at Way to Charlie looked around and he said, the condition of the world is unacceptable to me. She feels suffering because of the suffering of others. When we see others suffering when we're in material consciousness, Prabhupada says, or when we see somebody fail, <coughs> then secretly I become happy. Prabhupada said, no matter what you say externally, this is the nature of envy. And when I see somebody successful and happy, then I think, why is it them and not me? <laughs> but if I show up, it's the opposite. I'm fine. And Prabhupada said, this is the fine in the hospital where the man has tubes coming out. How are you? I'm fine. We're not fine. <laughs> really not fine. And when we admit it and we open our heart to Krishna and say, I'm not fine and I really need help, this is a powerful moment in, in our sojourn here in the material world. So great to Arya, he needed help to spread the Christian conscious movement. He felt things were so bad in Kali Yuga that could he hold back the tide of Kali Yuga and give people the benediction that he so wanted to give them. So this is the culture we're in. This is a very culture. It's not envious. Which is the, the essence of all religion is to give up envy. There is no greater religious principle than to give up envy. And so, Advaita Acharya, oh, I, have, I actually have slides, look at that. <laughs> I'll show you a few slides. 
And there's the Bhaktacharya worshipping Shalvadram Shila. And of course, as you know, he, he found a verse that said, if you offer the Lord Ganges water and Tulsi leaves, then he becomes indebted to you and he'll do anything for you. So Bhaktacharya was crying out for the Lord, please help to spread the Sankirtan movement. So this is the clue. You may think there's many techniques for book distribution, but there's only one, and in Waita Charya showed us what it is. You really have to cry out to the Lord. In Weight Watchers, it's a, it's a program in America for people who want to lose weight. There's a big sign they put in their lobby, and it says, you gotta wanna. Say, you gotta wanna. You gotta wanna. You gotta wanna. You know what that means? It's slang for you you have to really want it. You got to want it. But in, in when you do it kind of in a slang, you say you gotta want it. Like you gotta you really have to want it. So this is the first key to book distribution. And unknowingly I used this key when I first joined the Christian Conscious Movement and I was introduced to book distribution. And I was very eager to, to distribute more books. It was just starting to explode. There were only uh, some incidents where devotees had distributed big books, and there were a couple devotees who had excelled. And they were selling sometimes 20 big books, 40 big books in a day. And to the rest of us, it was undistributed six big books. And he came home with a for the whole temple to find out how he had done it. And then we heard about another devotee in another temple, it was selling 40 big books. And we said, that's impossible. People said, that's, that's not true, it's a lie. <laughs> but when we verified it, it struck me that, how is it possible? And I wanted to know. So I went to the book room. This is means to beg. And so we're helpless, we're tiny, but Krishna is our friend. And if we really beg him, he'll help us. So that's what Advaita Acharya showed. That's why he's Acharya. He showed the example that we need Krishna's help, and the way to get it is to worship him and really call out from your heart. So, seminar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, actually, he appeared because of the loud cries of the great Acharya. He said so when he came. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's movement is very simple. There's two parts. One part is chant Hare Krishna. Everyone say it. The other part is teach others. Part one is? Hare Krishna movement all over again in their own right. 
We're all part of one big movement. We want those that use their lives to help all the souls of the world, and they use marketing, qualitative, and quantitative reasoning skills to expand it. Taking it seriously, the gun brought Gaudi Vaishnavism to any other country at that time. Many of them thought that, well, this means every town and village may be in India. Even that seemed inconceivable. <coughs> what to speak of taking it to other countries? That was not even, you know, something they would venture into thinking about, because like, how, how could that happen? But some did think about it. The, the great souls were constantly thinking about it. Of course, the movement after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became hidden for some time. It went underground. This is the nature of the material world. Even the parampara, the transcendental vibration, Krishna tells Uddhava in the letter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, by the influence of the modes of material nature, it becomes obscured, and so did Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teachings, until the great Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared. And Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur effectively reopened the marketplace of the Holy Name. Let's please say it. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is so powerful. When I was in Mayapur in 1975 for a festival, when Prabhupada came every year, 19, uh, every year in March, we go there for Gorpurnima. All Practically everyone in the movement would come there. stopped and he said something to his um, devotees that were around him and I didn't hear what it was, the kirtan was going on. But later I heard the recording and he said that we have brought them here, Prabhupada said. Now the Murtakur, he can deliver them. May a ray of Vishnu in my family to help me spread this. Boy, what a ray of Vishnu appeared, right? And Srila Bhakti said, I'm done. And he also was a spiritual visionary. He saw that a great personality would come to help spread it all over the world. You have to have this kind of conviction and optimism to see that the Christian conscious movement can't spread. If you have that sense of confidence in the power of the Holy Name, then you think, of course this could happen. In fact, great souls, they see the future of a person because they know that the Holy Name is so powerful that one can become transformed and improved. The lowest of people, they judge somebody by their past. They say, well, this is how they were in the past. Therefore, that's who they are. A more advanced person judges a person by who they are now. Don't forget that this is who they are now. But the greatest of personalities, they see the future of a person because they know the potential of every soul especially when coming in contact with the Holy Name. Shukadeva Goswami says that this is our theme for our Krishna Conscious Movement. Anybody can be delivered. It doesn't matter how fallen. We're not interested in just saving already advanced. This is to just for people from a certain continent or culture, it's for everybody. In fact, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur in one of his writings said, we're concerned with spreading Christian consciousness even to the vegetable tribes. So if someone can try that today, <laughs> when we go out for a Sankirtan, to influence the vegetable tribes to take to Christian consciousness. So, at the Bhagavatam says he came out with the loudest voice he could. He said the Brihat Madanga is the loudest voice that you can make in this world for Krishna, the printing press. And he expanded the Sankirtan marketplace beyond India. It went past the shores of India. First of all, the Gaudi Mantra was a huge success, huge success all over India. Gaudi Vaishnavism, the face of Gaudi Gaudiya Vaishnavism changed because of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. Because of the degradation after the disappearance of 
Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, people did not think well of Gaudiya Vaishnava. So the Gaudiya Vaishnava knocked on your door and think, give them something, get them out of here. They're just beggars. There was all kinds of distortions of the movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur fixed that. He brought back the glory of the teachings of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. All the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he trained all his followers in ways that, would, that amaze the world to see such upright citizens of the spiritual world. Then, when Abhai Charanaravinda, the humble disciple of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, a grihasta amidst, amidst the sea of brahmacharis and sannyasis in the Gaudiya Math, humbly asked his guru, what can I do? What, how can I do some service for you? I, I can't be as close to you as the others. I have family, I have business, and so forth. Among other things, this is a memorable mantra that he taught to his disciple, but Srila Bhaktisiddhanta said, if you ever get money, print books. He gave that mood. He said, we built this temple in Bhagwazar, and now I notice that my disciples are fighting over which room they get to stay in. This fighting, by the way, is a sign of a Kanishta Adhikari. Kanishta Adhikari, Mr. Prabhupada writes in the in Sri Shapanishad, they fight amongst themselves. I'm right, no, I'm right, this is my room, no, that was my room, I was here first. Madhima Adhikari is on the other hand. They use all their energy to think about how to expand the Sankirtan movement. Which would you rather have if you were starting a community? Would you rather have Kanishtas fighting over little trifles? Or would you rather have Mahdi Mahdi Kharis who are taxing their brains thinking how to spread Krishna consciousness? So in this, who wants a community full of Kanishta Adhikaris? Raise your hand. No? Okay, Mahdi Mahdi Kari. There's a few more. How do you become a Mahdi Mahdi Kari? We'll talk about that in a while. Prabhupada said he took up this mood of his guru. And this is the secret to success in spiritual life. To take up the mood, the order of the that the order of the Supreme Personality guided is a manifestation of his internal potency. It is by that potency that one comes to see the Lord face to face. Look no further than the order of the Supreme Personality guided, or the order of the Supreme Personality guided coming through Guru. If you take it, You'll come to see the Supreme Personality God it face to face without a doubt. I believe, if I remember correctly, I wrote that book. And I was doing a lot of research. I mean, I was there in the 70s. I, I heard it from Prabhupada himself and I felt the mood, the way Prabhupada was propagating book distribution. He pushed it and he pushed it hard. And it was his life and soul and he expressed it in many ways. But I started finding that people were writing things about book distribution saying, it's actually, actually that important. Devotees became fanatical. Prabhupada wasn't like that. Blah, blah, blah. And so I started interviewing saying, what, what do you think of this? And they said, this is ridiculous. They don't know anything. They're upstarts. Prabhupada's mood was always 100% engaged in this compassion. And he expressed the compassion through the mass distribution of books. So. It's important to know the mood of our founder Acharya. What was his mood? That can become obscured. If the, if the teachings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu after he departed can become obscured, so can the teaching, book distribution, manifesting his expansion of Sankirtan all over the world and so forth. So picking up the mood. He spread the marketplace all over the world, did he not? Yes. Say yes. 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 Say yes. It's, it's a miracle, actually, the things that happen. You can read all about it in these books by Shavasundar, by Mukunda Maharaj, and so forth. That you can see that the mood at the, the things that happened were, you know, there were a few centers open in America, Maldi, Shavasundar, Mukunda. Uh, we'd like to get the Beatles involved. And probably said, go ahead. I mean, how are you going to get the Beatles involved? You don't have any money, you just started it. But they did. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's one thing after another. These miracles happen when you're when you take shelter of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the mood that I want to spread this all over the world. That's where you can expect miracles. 
So look at this, Srila Prabhupada's first pamphlet to advertise his book. At this time, there were only his vision all over the world. So he writes in a, a purport about the mood. Prabhupada writes about the mood of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He says, this is the mood of Lord Chaitanya. If you want to know what Lord Chaitanya is thinking, he said, I want everyone to be immersed in this inundation of love of Godhead. That was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He's God. He's Krishna. And he's thinking, I want everyone to be immersed in this inundation of love of Godhead. And that's what Prabhupada calls the Lord's plan. Is that clear? Say yes. yes. Okay, now here's Prabhupada's plan. He said, by printing books, we can actually inject our movement into the masses of people all over the world. And I like this idea of distributing books and preaching. That is Lord Chaitanya's plan. You see the parallel? Are you seeing the connection? Yes. Say yes. 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 There is a connection here. So, Welcome to the Sampradaya of the Book. Did you know that we're called the Sampradaya of the Book? Were you aware of that? I was not aware of it until I wrote my book. And I asked uh, Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, the, the, the great sage and scholar. Rabindra Sarup Prabhu, you know him? He's one of the early, early members of the Christian Congress of Movement. Brilliant scholar and just purest hearted devotee all over me. I got to know him in, in Philadelphia in the early days. And then later on, I was there. Uh, teaching Sankirtan seminars. There was a rumor about uh, Rabin Prabhu that he didn't like book distribution. It was a false rumor, but there was something about it. He didn't like the way some people were doing it in the early days, so this rumor got started that he didn't like book distribution. So I was at the, at the Philadelphia Temple when he was temple president. This was several years ago. And I was working with the team, and we need to represent several items. One thing we needed a book room, we needed vehicles, we needed all kinds of stuff. So we were asking, granted, granted, granted. And I looked at him, at the list, because half the devotees thought, he'll never give us all this stuff. And I looked and I said, wow, you're really into this. And he goes, I was there. I heard it from Prabhupada. He wanted book distribution, what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, something doesn't seem like it fits the time, right? So what what about this picture seems a little funny to you? You explain it. Give, give this Mataji here, what is your name? Anuradha. Huh? Anuradha. Anuradha, give her the microphone. We have an extra mic. Here it comes. You're going to get a mic from Madhava Govinda. Okay. What's, what's anachronistic about that picture? What looks a little funny to you? What looks a little strange? Holding a book. So he's a creator, but he created a book. What happened? What's wrong with the picture? The knowledge has to come from higher. Okay, you're getting close. It's a simple answer. What's the answer? The knowledge is imparted from Krishna. Knowledge is more less philosophical than you're making. There weren't any print printing presses back then. <laughs> was the beginning of creation. There was no. It, it's a say. What everyone say together? Book. Book. But say it louder. Book. I want you to scare the devotees down there who may <laughs> Book. That's good. Okay, here we go. Shiva Vyasadev. Oh, what's he writing there? A book. 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 Okay, book. It didn't work because he had to say a book. He's writing a book. book. Okay, Shulamacharya, you see what he's holding in his hand? What is he holding in his hand? Correct. Uh, Shulamacharya Goswami, he's kneeling before a? Very good, you're doing good so far. Here's Shulamacharya Goswami, he's depicted here sitting and writing a? Correct. Six Goswamis are famous for writing? Correct. Oh, I just noticed this. Here's a picture of Srila Bhakti Thakur. What is he posing with? Books. What about, oh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta. What, what's that? Books. Books. Correct. Okay, there's only one last question. Are you ready? Yeah. Here's his divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Swami Prabhupada. By the way, what 
what's he posing with? Bulls! Bulls. You are correct. You did very well. You got 100%. That's why we're called the Sumperdite of the book. We're into books. Books are very powerful. Look at some of the books that changed the world. This is the little known fact here, but this is the, the best selling book per capita of any other book ever in the history of the world. Per capita. It was, it was sold to everybody in the colonies before the colonies became the United States of America. And this was a small book, about the size of a POY, Fraction of Yoga, that uh, convinced everybody in the colonies to rise up and, and make a revolution, which is not such an easy thing to do. Most people just like to stay down and keep calm and go on with uh, doing whatever they're doing. But to get a revolution going, you really got to get people riled up, don't you? They have to be willing to die for their cause. That's the book that did it. They read that book and said, we'll die for this. And that's why there's the United States of America. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. But. How about, who here has heard of evolution, the theory of evolution? Now again, how many people have heard of the theory of evolution? You've heard of the theory of evolution. You've heard of it. Raise your hand. Everybody. The reason that we've all heard about the theory of evolution, and everybody in Bangalore has heard of the theory of evolution, is because somebody took the trouble to write a book about it. Humans revere books. Books are, and, and let me just say, they started in a very simple way. People from time immemorial have been writing things down. They've written things on shells. They've written things on in, uh, walls. They've written on leaves. And this is a leaf, of course. This is a palm leaf. And it, it was an arduous process to produce a book back in the old days. How long would it take you to write a POY by hand? The picture of the printing press that he bought from Cleveland, Ohio, USA. That's the brand he bought. It's there in the museum in uh, Cal Calcutta. If you go to the museum at the Buck Bazaar, you'll find the original printing press that Shula Bhaktisiddhanta himself brought over from Cleveland, Ohio, USA. This company is no longer in business. It went out of business around 1975. But that's the printing press. And books are containers. Everyone say that. Books are containers. Let me ask a question, Anuradha. What are books? Books are containers. No, use the microphone. I'm just asking her. Go ahead. Books are the containers. No, no, use the microphone. Books are the containers. Books are containers, say. Books are containers. Do you agree with her? Hare Krishna. Everyone agrees with Anuradha uh, with say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Books are containers. Okay. Now, what do they contain? Idea seed. So when the containers go out in the world, like the book by Charles Darwin about, about this theory of evolution, and then you've got the Common Sense book by uh, Thomas Paine, and myriad other books, the seeds of ideas spill out. They go into the minds and hearts of human beings. Why is it so effective going to human beings? What is a human being anyway? What is a jiva? technically called? Like what category of energy is a jiva? Tatasta shakti. What does tatasta mean? Marginal energy. I would propose another phrase. Tatasta means open to suggestion. Every jiva is open to suggestion. If, if you just say, hey little jiva, come over here, I want to tell you something. I want you to drink this drink. It's got sugar, it's caramel color, it's got little bubbles in it, you drink this, you'll be happy. In fact, you make a sign that says, Jiva, drink Coca-Cola, you'll be happy. So Jiva looks at it and goes, hey, that's where happiness is, in a bottle of Coca-Cola. And Jiva buys some, he brings it home, every cell in his body saying, don't put that in here. <laughs> but the little Jiva saw the sign. The little Jiva is open to suggestion. He drinks the Coca-Cola, and did he find happiness? Not exactly. So everyone's walking around the world open to suggestion, and they're getting Coca-Cola instead of getting Bhagavad Gita. So this process of Sankirtan, there's a logic behind it. And the way to increase it here in Bangalore, 
It's not a mystery, it's a recipe. And here are the uh, parts of the recipe that are fundamental, and if you follow them, there's only four major parts, if you follow them, I guarantee you, you'll be successful. So before I go to this part, I want to take a couple of reflections. A reflection is not a question. A question has a question mark at the end of it, and I have to answer, and I'm not going to answer anything right now. I want you to reflect back something that you heard, that you found useful, that you can put in your pocket and take out of here, and if you left this room right now and somebody grabbed your arm out there and said, what is that guy talking about in there? This is the one thing that you're going to say. And I want you to use the microphone and hold it close to your mouth so we can hear. And we'll take several of them. We have the fastest microphone runner in the history. <laughs> but if you don't get the microphone within seven seconds, we'll give you your money back for today's seminar. <laughs> so, the part which I like the most was the technique uh, you told the technique, the best technique is the trial for the help of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a, a time tested technique. I like the I like the phrase the sampradaya of the book. Sampradaya of the book, yes. Very good. Right from Brahma Shiva. It's a good cause to stand up for, isn't it? I mean, in general, books are high-minded material, and it's, you know, anyone who's around books, who's associated with books, they're considered to be high-minded. What to speak of transcendental books, right? Very nice point. Yes. Uh, Sant Hare Krishna teach others. This point is... Let's try it again. Thank you very much. Yes. Praying to books. Say? Praying to books. Pray to the books. Yeah, you you can pray to the books. In fact, Prabhupada told us this is a little history. I think it's in my book. I can't remember if I wrote it or not. I think I did. But this is a this is a true history. I've sourced it out. I talked to several devotees who were there. When traveling Sankirtan first started, this was a new thing, going out in a van or a car or a bus or your deities. Okay, who is next? The uh, secret for book distribution is to cry and beg for the mercy of the Lord. Yes, cry and beg for the mercy of the Lord. You are absolutely 100% correct. Mataji. Hare Krishna. Mission statement of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Every town and village. Correct. That's a big scope, isn't it? Yes, Mataji. Books are containers. Books are containers, yes. Book ladies, if we are serving them and distributing them, we are in touch always. Yes. What did he say? When we take the book ladies. Book ladies. Oh, when we take the book ladies, we're always in touch with Krishna all the time. Yes. Prabhu in the back. The marketplace for the holy name. Marketing is a big science. Not that you back here knows she's oh. all marketing. She knows all about it. Yes. Feel the presence of Krishna by doing book distribution. You're in the presence of Krishna when you're doing book distribution. Yes. Three more. One. Book distribution is high sadhana. Book distribution is high sadhana. Everyone say it. Book distribution is high sadhana. This is the highest sadhana according to the Bhagavatam. Shrigadeva Goswami in describing the mood of Lord Shiva. You know this pastime when he drank the ocean of poison. So Shukadeva Goswami describing the mood of Lord Shiva who is the greatest of Vaishnavas. Vaishnavanam Yatashram. He says, Tapyante Vukatapena Sarva Presojana Parama Araranam Tadi Purushasya Kilavana. He says, the highest method of worshipping the Supreme Personality of God called Parama Araranam is to take some suffering upon oneself to alleviate the suffering of others. That is the highest method of worshiping the Lord who is within everyone's heart. Okay, we got two more before we move on. Yes. You got a wana. You got a wana. Everyone say that. <laughs> you got a wana. Yeah, we should put a big banner up. You got a wana. We follow weight washers. If you're going to lose weight, you got a wana. Actually, mentally, when we read books, we actually get nagging saying that. 
material books are like you know bookworms. People who read books are bookworms. Yes, become a bookworm. Bookworm. But when we uh, when I heard this, it's actually spiritual knowledge, and this is through book from Brahma till Prabhupada. It's actually a great inspiration for newcomers like us yes. through book distribution. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. So the, we're the best kind of bookworms. All right, that's it for now. Save those because we're going to have more reflections later. I do it frequently throughout the, the presentation, so there'll be plenty of time to share. But I, that that meant a lot to me. Those points that you remember just now. It really augmented the points in my mind. And it's a, an amazing experience to speak to an audience, and then you are hearing things and you're reflecting them back, especially with your own enthusiasm and realization. It gives me impetus to go on. For to stay more. Should I do a little bit more? You want to stand up? Let's stand up just for one minute. And try stretching. Put your hands like this. And stretch up high like this. And say go rub. Okay, now change the, the webbing on your hands and move it like that. Just one finger over and stretch up high. Try to touch the ceiling with your palms and say go rub. Say go rub one more time. Mystery. You know, if it was just chance that some people got ahead because uh, they were just lucky, then I'd be morose. Because there'd be no way to actually become an agent for change and say that I want to be successful too. But there is a way to become successful if you follow the recipe. And I'm going to give you a recipe for success in book distribution. And I guarantee it 100%. If you follow these four laws of book distribution, You'll individually become expert at book distribution and prolific, but your community and your region will turn into a dynasty for book distribution. I have proof. Yeah, that's a hard ball there. I tell you with great modesty that the community I come from started with just a few devotees. We focused from the very beginning when we opened that place on book distribution. We started in a very, very humble way. We couldn't even afford a book table when we first started. There were only about three devotees going out. When we first had some goals, we raised a hundred dollars. That's just a couple thousand rupees, or whatever it is. And we thought that was a big stretch. We celebrated. We've been celebrating since 2007 when we started. The last year, 2019, our little community of grahastas and kids, children, gave to the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust $607,000 because of this, these principles I'm about to show you. So I know they work, and we've employed them in other places too, following these four laws. So here we go. Four laws of book distribution. The first law is that your sadhana must be strong. What's the first law? Your sadhana must be strong. That is correct. Your sadhana must be strong. Here are three words Prabhupada used in various places. I strung them together in a little bracelet that you can wear wherever you go. Strict, serious, and sincere. Say it. Strict, serious, and sincere. Yes. When you perform strict, serious, and sincere sadhana, you get a taste. And let me just tell you that all advancement in Krishna consciousness takes place at the level of absorption. You have to be absorbed when you chant and read and hear and serve. And I'll give you an example of chanting when you're not absorbed. I'm chanting, but I'm thinking, when's this going to be over? <laughs> How many more rounds do I have to do? And it seems like it's taking a long time just to do one round. That's when my mind is absorbed in the river of time and being carried away by time. Have you ever chanted, I'm sure you have, when you're feeling that, how did my 16 rounds get over so soon? I wish I could stay here longer and chant more rounds. Or when you're in the, absorbed in the river of time, someone pulls out a Chaitanya Charitamrita and said, let's read for a little while, and you say, I gotta go. I hear my mom calling me. She needs a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I gotta go. 
because the mind rejects the idea, I don't want to hear. Versus somebody pulls out a Chaitanya Charter read it, and it's the happiest sight you could see that now we get to hear again. So we have to come to this point of absorption through strict seriousness and sincere sadhana. And there's a lot to say about that. It's a whole other seminar. But the fact is, once we have that absorption, we have what's called overflow. Overflow. It means we have something to distribute. People aren't buying books from you. I'm going to make a radical statement. They're not interested in the book. You know what they're interested in? <coughs> you. They look at you. When they see your countenance, they see a brightness that comes from you. Every living entity is putting off some kind of an energy. And when they feel from you the energy that they're looking for, that everybody's looking for, happiness, that can only come from the Brahma Bhutta platform, Prasanatma, you're feeling Prasanatma, that's what they're buying. They might not even know what the book is, they might not even care, because they see it in you. And that only comes from strict series and sincere sadhana and distributing the overflow, that's what you're giving them. So it's strict series and sincere sadhana, just a few practical points. The day starts, the, the, your, your day starts the night before. Okay, be careful about the night before, try to be regulated and go to sleep early so you can wake up and have strict series and sincere sadhana. Go to bed on time. Sit in a circle, sit with others and chant japa in a concentrated way. You have to be a little into politics to understand this next one. But somebody gave me this hat. We have a, a president in the United States. You may have heard of, I won't even mention his name, but he has this hat that says, Make America Great Again. So we decided it was a better idea to make Jaffa great again. And we've started this program at our temple and many other temples where the, the whole community sits together in a circle and we chant Jaffa and we stop at intervals and read something about the, the power of the Holy Name. And it's to emphasize that everything comes from the strict, serious, and sincere chanting of the Holy Names and other kinds of sadhana. We win with the basics in sadhana. You have to do the basics every day. If you do the basics in a sound and solid way, then you'll advance. So here's one of those solid ways, Bhagavad Gita as it is, chapter a day. So this is a program called CHAD. CHAD stands for chapter a day. And it means a little drops a day, little uh, pieces of dust. This is uh, from Japan. Chiri Motsubareba Yamatanaru. They say in Japan that little specks of dust they add up to a mountain. So if you do your sadhana well each day, you'll start to become as strong as the Himalayas. Prabhupada said that. He told the devotee that if you do strong sadhana every day, then you'll, you'll become, your devotional service will become as strong as the Himalayas. So he encouraged us all to read one chapter of Bhagavad Gita a day. That means at least read the verses, the Sanskrit or the English. Here's another quote. So here's our website, readchat.com. There are thousands of devotees all over the world now that every day, without fail, they chant at least one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. And you can do just the Sanskrit or just the English, or you can do everything, including all the purports. But Touch the Bhagavad Gita every day, read at least one chapter every day. That will change your life, I guarantee you. That will give you power to distribute the Bhagavad Gita if you're reading it every day. It will change your family life, it will change your social life, it will change your working environment. Everything about your life will change if you just add this one thing, chant one chapter of Bhagavad Gita every day. Here's another device, it's called Be a Sage, Page by Page. I invented this myself when I was thinking about reading all the Prabhupada's books and it seemed to like a daunting task. If you look at a whole bookcase full of all the Prabhupada's books, it seems like I don't have time to read all those. Doesn't it seem like that sometimes? Or do you have more time down here in Bangalore? I want to how many hours do you get in a day down here? In California, we get 24. What do you get here? Is it the same? So maybe you feel that you felt this before yourself. That all these books, you only have 24 hours a day, how am I going to read it? Here's how. You break it down into smaller parts. And this app that's free, you can get it for Android or for iOS. Free app. 
and it will tell you how many pages to read each day in order to complete any of Prabhupada's books within a given amount of time. So, as an example, if you wanted to complete Prabhupada's a complete Srimad Bhagavatam, 12 cantos, within two years, all you have to do is read 21 pages a day. Does that sound reasonable? Yes. How about if you wanted to read it in one year? 41 pages a day. Only. Put only at the end. 41 pages a day. Only. Do that here in the end. Rupees of 21 only. <laughs> Second law of book distribution is you must get books. Say it. You must get books. What's the first law of book distribution? <laughs> Say it again together. <laughs> That's right. The second law of book distribution is? You must get books. Yes, yeah, we've done scientific studies. We did, went to many major universities. We did double blind studies. And the, the results of our study, we have the data available. Anyone wants to see it, we have spreadsheets and graphs. The conclusion was you can't distribute books you don't have. <laughs> it's practically a law of things. And so I want you to all say this to scare the devotees downstairs. I want you to say it in a military way, like when they say, uh, ask you a question in boot camp, you say, sir, yes, sir. You go, sir, yes, sir. Now, when I ask you what's the second law of book distribution, I want you to say, get books. 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 Because when you have books and you should get books, because as I told you before, these are the rarest and most valuable deities on the Earth planet today. And it's a miracle that we have them available through high-speed printing. If you were to get these books hand-copied, you wouldn't have books. So take advantage and don't take it for granted. Don't think, oh, we have books everywhere. I've seen books. They have them in my car. But, you know, take, take this seriously. The books are the most valuable asset we have in our Christian conscious movement. We are the supply of the book. So if you keep books with you wherever you go and you make sure you have books on hand, you will distribute books. Now let me ask you a question. If you don't have any books in your house, if you don't have any books in your temple or in your car, how many books will you distribute? Approximately. Approximately how much? Zero. Approximately zero. Yes. And if you have books and you keep them with you, wherever you go, what what is the amount that you could possibly distribute that's, um, what what would be the equation that you would say? You could say higher than zero, right? Higher than zero. Okay, so that's algebra. I think you can figure that out. So get books, here's the devotees loading cases of books into their go shows, and get all the languages that you need. This is another miracle that we have books translated into various languages. That when I was in, when I was interviewing devotees around the world who had uh, translated Prabhupada's books into various languages, this is one of the most difficult tasks in the whole movement because there are a lot of languages that, that words just don't match up. You know, it's an art to be able to translate it into various languages so, so that other people of other countries can understand it. But we have that. Somehow or other, Prabhupada inspired thousands of people to come forward and help him publish his books and get them translated into other languages. So make sure you get those books too. Don't miss anybody. Use language cards. Now, a language card is a magical way of distributing books because if you meet somebody who doesn't speak your language, all you have to do is hand them the book, then hand them the card, and then stand there in mountain pose and don't say a word and wait until they decide because they know that you know that they know what it means. <laughs> and now it's just a simple yes or no becomes binary and it's a very powerful way to distribute books in various languages. In fact, at our yatra, which I'm, we're on our way to right now, uh, we hold every year, uh, in Jagannath Puri, the last few years, we, in five days, with just a hundred yatris and half of them that don't speak English. We distributed 5,000 books in five days on our yatra. And we did it using language cards. We had cards in Bengali, Hindi, and Oriya. And all the devotees, a lot of them from China, 
They would just hand the person a book, then hand them the card, stand at Mountain Post, and receive the donation. And this is one of the ways that you can distribute books. A third law of book distribution, we don't say it military, but we say it twice. Please say it twice. Twice. No, please say it twice. <laughs>
uh, don't report the scores to the sanctum. There's always, you just do it as a hobby. I just do it in my spare time. Yeah, that's okay. If you just want to stay at a small level and do a few books here and there, that's fine. But if you want to build an impressive enterprise, if you want to build a dynasty of book distribution, which is actually an interesting project, that makes life really interesting and it attracts a lot of attention from the right people, like Lord Chaitanya. <laughs> <laughs> then organize. You know how to organize. And if you don't, find somebody who does and say, come over here, show us how to organize this. And then once you get organized, there is no limit to how much you can increase. No limit. How could a little one-horse temple like ours rise to be the number one temple, not only in North America, but we haven't checked yet how everybody else did around the world. But we're giving over half a million dollars a year for book distribution. How does a one-horse little grahasta temple with little kids, babies, five-year-olds going out and distributing books, Rise that level two to organization. Two year olds, zero year olds coming up. <laughs> okay, so here's Prabhupada. He organized, he thought about the organization way before he inaugurated it, and that's one of the reasons it was so successful. It's not that he just did it haphazardly, he thought about it, he used all the principles of strategic planning. Here's evidence. Here's the seventh purpose, seven out of seven of the purposes of ISKCON with a view, and I want you to listen carefully, and if there's any attorneys in the room, I need, I need your help in interpreting this. With a view towards achieving aforementioned purposes to publish and distribute periodicals, magazines, books, and other writings. What does that mean? Aforementioned. Whatever came before this. Whatever came before will be achieved through what? Isn't that amazing? That's just a side point, but the fact is that Prabhupada had so much faith in book distribution, he put this at the seven and said, you'll achieve all the four I mentioned, the four mentioned were six others, by distributing books. Isn't that amazing? Say yes. It is amazing. Okay, create an event calendar. Once you put something on the calendar, as a community or as an individual, you say, I'm doing it on this date, your life will change because our minds are like heat-seeking missiles. We go towards a goal. And when you write it down and you say, it's at this point of time that it's going to happen, that's when the energy starts to become more efficient. It's called forced efficiency. If I just say, I'll do it anytime, <laughs> then it'll never happen. But if you say, I'm going to do it on this date, which just happens to be the first of some month, then you know you're working towards something. When NASA builds a rocket, the big event seems to be the rocket shooting off into, the, into space. But actually the bigger events are what happen behind the scenes because of forced efficiency. Did you know that the entire system of management that is taught in the top flight schools all over the world came from NASA? Because of their forced efficiency in having to uh, get rockets off at a certain time and be very careful about accounting for all the parts of the rocket and make sure it all gets going. So in the same way, when you have this monthly Sankirtan festival, you're working towards a date to increase Sankirtan, the whole community, all the aforementioned principles that Prabhupada mentioned, the purposes of ISKCON, they also become augmented by this power of organization in Sankirtan. Goals are potent. My old friend Will McCoy said goals are potent. It's so true. As soon as you set a goal individually or collectively, it's like flipping a switch and all the energy comes in. As soon as you say, we're doing this, then you have to figure out how to do it. And that's where the energy comes from. Set goals. You have to set goals. <coughs> Manage your inventory very carefully. Here's a a uh, relatively well-managed book room. You can see that, how nice it looks. It should look nice and take care of the inventory. You should know where everything is. You should know how many books you have and when you need more. Build a follow-up strategy. There's so many ways to do that. But if you have a strategy for it, then you're going to be bringing in people and actually engaging them. Build team spirit. This, I think, is one of the most important points. 
Did you know that in our temple at ISB, we don't report any individual scores? I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm just saying that we think of ourselves as one team and we work together. And then, in fact, seven years ago in North America, we got together, the GBCs and temple presidents, and we decided we're going to work as one team in, in North America, that means American Canada, and we're going to shoot towards a percentage increase overall, all of us working together. And did you know the first two years we increased by 20% and subsequent years since then we've increased by 10% overall as a group? And did you know that we've tripled book distribution in just seven years in North America because of working in a team spirited way? So, so this is very important to think as a team and we're all for one and one for all. What gets measured gets improved. Analyze and report scores. There's so many ways you can analyze what you're doing, how many books you're doing, where you're doing them, and on what days you're doing. And emphasizing the great art of book distribution. And I'm going to tell you about my realizations of how to distribute books to Hindus. <laughs> and just after we take a break, because it's 11 o'clock, or just a few minutes before, let's just see if you have a couple of reflections before we take our first break. Yes, Prabhu. One, two. You must get the books. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Our sadhana should be strong. Sadhana must be strong. Prabhupada, in the seventh last point, has mentioned the books are the basis, like all six will get you with the yeah. solutions. That's amazing, isn't it? That's a real gem. Yeah. Create an event calendar. Yes, create an event calendar. The more you show, the more you sell. The more you show, the more you sell. We always say it twice because it's so important. Thank you. Attract, yes. Attracting attention of right people, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, you want to attract the attention of the right people, comma, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Little device open for suggestion. What did you say? Little device open for suggestion. Yes, a little genie means open to suggestion. You know, remember how uh, Mantra, Mantra was talking to Kaikei? Kaikei was so happy about Ram being inaugurated that Mantra was like, yeah, you don't want to do that. <laughs> this is a bad idea. I said, really? And after, you know, just a little while, she totally flipped and changed. And this happens all the time to little Jiva. Yes? Success is not a mystery, it is a recipe. That is correct. If you want to make a pit, if you want to make a cake, Find out somebody who has the best recipe and you say, how did you bake a cake? And then you can follow the recipe. And this is how we advance, not only in book distribution, but also in devotional service. Yes? Roji, I like uh, what you told about celebrating $100 uh, goal. Yes, and this is, I'm glad you brought that up because birds fly in the sky as high as they're able. And the sky is unlimited. So you can always go higher. But if you celebrate every success and also appreciate devotees, whenever they do anything, you'll develop an, an environment where you, what we call this, encourage the heck out of everybody. <laughs> Take your time to encourage devotees, catch them doing something right and appreciate it. It, it uh, gives courage in the heart. In fact, the word courage comes from French. Of core means the heart. We move through life successfully or not because of the level of courage that we have in our heart. And if we get encouragement from others on our team, then we'll be able to do more and more and more. So important. Last one. Prabhu, all the way at left field. As we say in baseball. Okay, go ahead. Distribute water. Distribute water. Yes. When you do strict, serious, and sincere devotional service, we have overflow. So it's Rod not large once told me, and I was telling him about all my problems in management, this, that, this, that, it's so hard. And he told me one thing, always stuck with me. He said, the real secret to management is that you have to be blissful. <laughs> he said, if you're not blissful, you can't manage. You can't do anything, especially in an organization like ours. So it's the same thing in book distribution, same thing in management, same thing with solving the problems of life. First, get blissful. Strict, serious, and sincere sadhana is the only way to solve the problems in life because that's what makes you blissful. And if you don't have bliss, you don't have anything. 
Thank you very much for attending the first part. Not to the armor man. 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 Hey, not to the armor man. Not to the armor man. Not to the armor man. Not to the armor man.